Hello everybody, this is Juntas, and welcome to the Axemancer build. This is a Necromancer build that is sort of like the one that I recently showed on the channel that relies on procs. So I'm just gonna quickly go on the, yeah, kind of the mechanics of the items. So a lot of people could probably guess that Breath of the Dying is the main part of the build. But another thing that's also gonna be, yeah, I would say a bit different. You could see from the intro that I was able to survive really well. I was really not ever gonna die against the Shank Pack and whatnot. This armor here, I have never seen anyone use it online, offline, for any builds, whatever. <laughs> this just works so good uh, on this particular build. And then we are also using a Phoenix, which just gives a redemption aura. Uh, I will mention a quick thing with the shield, that's kind of optional. Uh, it just kind of works fine, you know, it has some enhanced damage, some survival and the redemption aura itself. But the uh, blaze proc is kind of, or the firestorm proc is a bit annoying to um, yeah, live with because it kind of interrupts your attacks. And then also it steals your corpses for corpse explosion, so it can be a bit messy. But I went with a phoenix for now and if you have other suggestions for a shield, uh, feel free to comment about that because that is very open. So the build is fairly simple. We have a few curses. Lower resist is the main curse. This one I will, I will really just use this all the time. Uh, and then we also have Amplified Damage, which you can use if you don't, you know, benefit much from poison explosions going on or whatever. And then we also have the Cribify for kind of just against bosses. I guess most people would always use uh, this one against like Bale or Diablo or something. And then we also have Life Tap, which comes handy if you are dying, your Merg is dying, anything like that. In terms of filler skills, we also have Bone Armor, which we don't really ever use. We don't need to pre-buff it as well if you don't want to. And then Bone Armor, and then also Corpse Explosion. Now, this build can play without Corpse Explosion, and we'll try to kind of just demonstrate that now on, I believe it was still on PS4, yeah. So, we will um, just kind of, yeah, try to do this without Corpse Explosion, because a lot of people are going to be turned off by a Necromancer build, because all of them will rely on Corpse Explosion. And maybe that's boring for some people. Uh, also do note that I am using a really strong Infinity Mercenary. Uh, which you can kind of, yeah, see that it helps out a lot. Anywho, um, I can see there's not much density there. We kind of rely on density because we need to proc or chain the poison over us a bit. So small pulls are not that great for us. Anywho, as soon as these kind of things are going off, you know, the corpse explosions and everything, it, the damage just gets really good. But it needs a little bit to get going, and uh, yeah, it can be a bit dangerous <laughs> against uh, small packs where you don't really chain a lot of, uh, yeah, poison nomas. Because as you saw in the intro, you can really chain a crazy amount of uh, poison nomas when everything just dies around you. It looks insanely good, uh, proccing that many around you. But to get that chain, you know, get it rolling, it's pretty difficult. Um, so again, small packs are not that good. So let's first take a look at the stats. Buffed for call times, I have almost 3000 life and 1000 mana. The mana burn, if you're facing mobs that are mana burning you, are quite an issue, because then you can't really spam a corpse explosion and whatnot. It gets a bit messy, uh, faced a few difficulties with mana burns, because again, you don't really leech. I actually don't even think I have any leech really going on, you know. Uh, the melee damage you're doing is quite small, so even if you have leech uh, rings and whatnot, it's not gonna help a lot. So yeah, mana burns was a bit of a concern. Anywho, still good life, uh, survival and whatnot. Uh, just enough strain again for your spirit on switch or the Phoenix Monarchy we choose to go with that sword. Uh, shield even. Um, I believe I also was close to... No, actually I didn't max block. Uh, yeah, I tested this out before I remember now that... Um, you know, together with uh, the stupid proc on the Phoenix Shield and Max blocking, you're kind of just stunning yourself into animation, so you're not really able to hit a lot. Because it's, it's really important that you get a good attack speed, so you can just keep hitting the mobs for progging uh, the poison over and, and whatnot to kill things. So, I didn't really like, uh, you know, Max block, but of course you can go with it if you can live with being stunned all the time. That animation is just so unfortunate, uh, really, really, yeah, it breaks a lot of builds. 
it's the same thing with like Amazon builds that some people don't like to use the passives uh, dodge, evade and avoid uh, just because that's also stunning you so you can do less damage um, yeah but I think that's pretty much it also you can see that I'm having really good resistance uh, I don't think I have any builds on the channel at all that has this good uh, amount of resistance maybe except some uh, paladin builds um, one f important thing uh, you should note, and this is actually something that breaks just a little bit. I mean, it's fun enough. I'm using a blessed aim, um, you know, blessed <laughs> aim uh, aura on my mercenary. You know, it's the little things that makes it quirky and uh, different. So, uh, 10,000 attack rain with the blessed aim was kind of great. Um, I don't really think I could go with any other setup to kind of increase it. Um, I can maybe even drop like the Raven Frost Ring here if you don't like to use Raven Frost Ring. Perhaps just use a Champ Rune in the Endarial Sage or something. Uh, Cave and Seagull or whatever those two items were called is also an option. But Metal Grid really helps a lot on capping resistance and gives that amazing amount of uh, stats. So Metal Grid is also another cool little item for stat boost. Anywho, just wanted to mention that blessed aim because usually everyone, well I am anyways, only gonna use the might uh, aura on my mercenary, so it's fun to change it up a little bit. And so let's take a look at these skills here. Uh, it's very optional if you want, uh, you know, the clay golems, uh, you're gonna use like five points or something to get this one. You could also go with some uh, revives, or even make uh, you know a decent amount of skeletons. Uh, but I don't really like summons, especially for this build. I feel like I just want to be, you know, just me and the mercenary. But you can go with summons if you want to. And then we are actually doing something a little bit fun here. Uh, we are not maxing bone armor because the synergies are better. Most people probably know about that if you have played a necromancer before. But yeah, we are completely synergizing bone armor as much as we can, putting all the points into it. Uh, I believe the remaining points was bone prison as well in this case. And then we are maxing poison nova, poison explosion and poison dagger. And then for curses we are just getting one of everything. You could actually just get all the curses in total. I would never really put uh, you know, remaining points into lower resist or what was it, uh, amplify damage up here. It's kind of up to yourself if you want more radius and, and duration and whatnot. I'm fine with just one point into everything. And so let's take an in-depth look at the gear. The gloves here was kind of optional. Uh, I think I saw a lot of uh, choices for the gloves, but the poison damage on triangles are just too good. The faster cast rate also kind of helps you a little bit, but not a lot. So I just went with triangles mainly just for the poison damage. The rings were also kind of optional. I feel like I should have experimented actually before making this video with some uh, dual lich ring. But I don't really think it's gonna help a lot anyways. Um, again you can drop raven frost ring uh, and then get like a charm rune in endowless visage or something. There are some ways to experiment it but I wanted to kind of follow the guide that I found on the internet and kind of get his feel before I uh, start experimenting myself so I'm mentioning these things now as an option you know you can even go com completely crazy and maybe even use some uh, assault rings or anything like that I even saw somebody suggesting yeah I'll pop it up on the screen what ring I'm referring to right now I can't quite remember its name um, but yeah uh, Thunder Gods was also a fun choice it gives a lot of assaults and I never really use it in any builds but for this particular build, it just fitted my needs quite well. Um, I like the Assault and like the, the stats. And then for helping capping resist, I was using some Trius boots here. Pretty boring and standard, I suppose. Um, I'm also way over capped on, well, not way over capped, but a little bit. Uh, I think I had, uh, yeah, I'll just lift this one. So you can see that I'm over capped by 15 of, was it five? Yeah, five cold resistance. So these boots here does help out quite a bit, but they're not really a big need. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I don't know if I should have went with Trivers boots or not. I have been, I've been using Trivers boots on a lot of my builds recently on the channel. Maybe it's a bit boring to always kind of go with Trivers boots. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. If you wanted to use some other boots, I could also just the uh, Eldros or Waterwalkers, those are really great as well. In terms of kind of like going more melee, I could also just uh, Gulliam's Face and uh, Gore Riders. Would be fun to experiment with that as well. 
those are definitely an option but again the melee damage you're doing is not that important but it would still be kind of cool to get some crossing blow and deadly strike and so forth so yeah do consider that and then as you saw before i was using a breath of dying a bone and a phoenix so the breath of dying just needs to be made in a berserker axe quite important because uh, it hits really fast it has like a vsmm of minus 10 so it's not as fast as a face blade uh, for grief or whatever as normal paladins would use but it's still a really fast base so we're just gonna go with a berserker axe and honestly this one this wave in here is not that expensive. You can see the runes are not too bad as well. Uh, so yeah, this is not a deal breaker um, weapon, you know. Some weapons can be really expensive. I wouldn't say uh, Breath of the Dying is in a Berserker X. Quite common item. And then the bone armor here is pretty fun. So, we don't really use the uh, bone spear damage to a lot, but it, I mean, it, it gives a little bit of damage, I guess. And the two to Nergromancer skills also helps us out quite a bit. The mana part was however very good and the all resistance as well. So, you know, it seems a bit of a gimmick, kind of just progging a bone hammer, but it works so well as you saw in the intro. Uh, yeah, I was quite amazed by the results myself where you can just stand. Uh, say you're just going on players one, you can literally just AFK surrounded by melee mobs and they will die before you are dying. I was actually testing out a few times where I was actually ending the fight with near or full health uh, as the pack was completely dead. It was hilarious, really really fun to see. And then the Phoenix Monarch, but as I said before, you can choose other shields. I would maybe consider something like a Storm Shield. You could also experiment with Max Proc and so forth. The uh, Firestorm Proc is also again just really annoying to live with because it interrupts your own attacks. The redemption aura can also be a bit of a hindrance for your corpse explosion. So as corpses are you know lying on the ground, they will be stolen or you know sucked up by the redemption aura. And yeah, that can mess up your own rotation. Uh, it gets a bit complicated uh, playing it. But still, it's not too bad. And I feel like the Phoenix Monarch still gives you all those great stats you're also looking for. So it's kind of up to yourself. Can you live with, you know, less corpses around, uh, the Firestorm proc and so forth. And then I'm using Metal Grid for a change. I have never really used this uh, amulet on any builds before. Maybe except for like a Smiter Paladin going for some survival-ish stats for Uber or something like that. It's such a... Yeah, this amulet just doesn't really fit on many builds. But in this case it does. Um, we really need the resistance somehow. Now where do I get my resistance from? I have my boots which is really optional, I can maybe get a little more resistance from like the rings. Uh, you know, I don't really have a lot of resistance sources, uh, unless I'm willing to maybe go into like the inventory stack to try some stats there. So uh, Metal Griffel just helped me out a lot on capping resistance. Um, I guess if again if you're using Storm Shield it wouldn't really be that needed. And if you can also find a way to live without a tag rating, uh, it's okay to replace it. But for this particular setup, Metal Grid was really good. And then Eldarius Visage, I'm still not sure if this is the best helm or not. Just because Gulliam's face is interesting, it's so much damage uh, just equipping it. The, um, you know, the plus two to all skills, I believe is not really so important, you know. We don't really benefit too much from the skills. But I do think that the... Um, yeah, I will just throw some attack speed numbers up on the screen now. Um, have to recheck this as I'm editing. But I think the 20% increased attack speed wasn't really helping me out a lot. Because I believe I got all my needed attack speed just from Breath of the Dying alone. But yeah, I will figure that out later. Anywho, the lifesteal is also not really that big of a need. Because I already have you know, lifesteal on the ring, so it's okay. Um, the strength does help me a little bit out, cause so I don't have to put that many points into strength for the Monarch. But yeah, the rest of that's not really that great. But I think that's uh, pretty much a round setup. So the gear is yeah again, there's, there's a lot of optional things. Um, you can maybe even go with another thing if you don't like using call arms, but I would probably always recommend that. But yeah, a lot of optional items. Uh, I can't be for sure if this is the best setup or not. But I would like to believe it is just because it's so well rounded and you know you see the resistance, you see the attack rating, you see the decent life and the decent mana. 
It's just, uh, yeah, the old synergize is really well. Okay, so here at the end, I wanted to do just a casual player one gameplay. Uh, I will also mention that in order to really maximize it now, I'm gonna be using mostly just lower resist. Gonna try to do a lot of corks explosion, rely on that. And then I'm also gonna use uh, poison over by myself. Now this poison over is only 4,000 damage, so it's not really super strong or anything, but it helps. Um, yeah, so let's just go for this one. So let's try to do a good pull here. Yeah, I mean the pack dies pretty fast when you're just able to, you know, bounce them up and just kind of chain that poison over, using your own poison over, some cock explosion, etc. It's kind of like playing a weaker, <laughs> you know, uh, poison over in Urquimancer, but also a weaker melee build altogether. It's definitely a hybrid. Um, some people would be turned off by this aspect, you know, doing a hybrid build, but I quite like it. You know, it's so different uh, that we never really see it. Also, this build, uh, the only source I found on the internet in terms of, you know, how rare is a build, um, I only found this one guide. Uh, no other external sources. So, 2010, so that's nine years old how old this build is. Maybe he was like the first one to kind of do the build as well. Who knows? I mean, he could have been inventing the build. I mean, who f thinks of this sort of aspect with using a bone armor together with, uh, yeah, uh, Phoenix and whatnot. It's, it's pretty cool. I, I like that for kind of, you know, unique build that you don't really see. Uh, that much online and whatnot, so pretty fun there. So let's do a big pull here in the room. Always so ideal with all the fucking <laughs> range mobs that's not gonna come close to me, but we'll try. Yeah, and I'm also getting uh, mana burns, so it's a bit unfortunate. Anywho, now there's a lot of corpses, so you can kind of just begin chaining the uh, corpse explosion into the packs and just kind of focus on things around you. Uh, again, small packs are not really ideal because they don't really chain a lot of poison over. It just kind of gets uh, slow at that point somehow. So it's a bit unfortunate. But uh, a pull like this one is just fun to do because you get so much uh, life and mana back with redemption and so forth. But maybe I'll pick up a few of these just in case before we move on to <laughs> minions or whatever it's gonna face me now. One thing that's for certain is that it's pretty safe build because I keep forgetting to buff up Call to Arms without really worrying about my survival. <laughs> it's pretty stupid of me, you know, going a showcase here on the build and I'm forgetting a pretty important part. But I don't know, I feel pretty, you know, safe. I will instant gift and die when there's a lot of elemental damage going around. Uh, I will admit that. Um, actually, I died just before, but I, of course, not gonna show you that on the video. But still, it's really, really safe with all the bone armor procs going from the wound road. It's uh, surprisingly good. Uh, a thing you can also kind of note: uh, you kind of hear bone armor procing all the time. You know, it's that sort of yeah, yeah, exactly that sound. And that j sound is just spamming all the time out of my speakers when I am. You know, in a heated combat situation, so it's pretty fun uh, seeing bone armor synergizing that well with the build. So you don't even have to worry about my cold arms uh, not being up. So let's do the room here. Huge pull. Rare that's 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 this many maps in the room, but uh, we'll see if I can survive this one. Guess I'll also just pop a portal just in case. Ah, my mercenary can't die now. Ah. <laughs> Uh, let's try this one without my mercenary on, but I doubt I will survive this one. Yeah, that was just no way. I really cannot live without the mercenary's blessed aim. Haha, <laughs> completely stun locked. Whoa. Let's do a big pull here. Haha, <laughs> it hurts too much. It's fair, it's fair. That's what happens. But I think that just about covers everything I wanted to do with this build in the video. This is a pretty fun thing to do a hybrid Necromancer melee build. 
I was also, um, you know, I'm pretty pleased with this performance compared to the last one I took a look at some weeks ago. That build was based on Bone Spear. With, uh, yeah, it was a brand rune word that was progging Bone Spear for me instead of uh, Breath of Dying. And this build definitely works a lot better. There are still some issues, uh, some survival issues, uh, damage, etc. But like we have a, you know, we have some decent things going here. We have, a, you know, a backup spell that we can always use. We have Corpse Explosion, which, yeah, it's just every, it's just part of a necromancer's life, I guess. And then we have some decent curses. And if you want to, you know, you can just get a, you know, a weaker bone armor, and suddenly you can experiment with summons or something like that. There's a lot of ways to kind of go about with this build. It's not that I'm, you know, I will admit that I, the strong Infinity Mercenary helps out a lot of times. Uh, definitely on single target, also where the packs are kind of smaller. But still, it's, uh, it's a pretty strong uh, result, I would say. So I'm pretty pleased with this uh, performance of the build. And honestly, again, this is another build that I make that I've never seen online and I've also never heard about uh, until I was lucky to kind of just Google around and find it. So pretty fun to, you know, take a look at such a rare build that I have never even, you know, considered this to be an option. But thank you so much for watching everyone and have a good one.